Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So as you can see, I'm going to be showing you guys how to pour some jigs. And by jigs, I mean like jig heads with just the hook. Just going to be something like this is the kind of jig that I'm talking about. As you can see, something like this. I got a couple different styles to show you guys how to pour and if we have time in this video I will make one showing how I powder coat them but it all depends on the time of the video so just stay tuned and watch and hope you guys learn something. First things first, I would like to talk about preheating your molds. And I would recommend preheating them no matter where you are, no matter how warm it is. I think it's pretty important to preheat your molds just so that the lead flows a lot smoother and easier and fills the entire cavity in here. And that way you don't have any gaps in your mold but that's just what I would recommend. Some people store them probably outside or in different spots or something like that where it may stay warm all the time. So here's one of the molds that we are going to be working with today. And I don't really have very many hooks left for any of the other ones. I think all I got is maybe a 3 8 maybe 7 16 but I'll have to look. But we're just gonna make a bunch of these. So first things first is, so I have an old thing like this when I used to make my own salsa. Just got a cheap little fork. What I'll do is, so take your cup, like this, grab an old fork like this, and what I do, because usually the bad stuff floats to the top, so if you can see this burnt stuff back here, I'll just kind of scrape the top layer to kind of get most of the bad things out, and you get something like this. I like to try to make sure that my lead doesn't have too many impurities in it. And I know it's lead, but so I just do that. Keep this off to the side just in case. I would recommend wearing gloves. I usually like to wear gloves because these molds get pretty hot if you leave them on top of the mold for a while. So I always put my soft plastic glove on. And we'll start with the easy one or probably my favorite one I should say. Before starting, this mold requires obviously a hook, which we got owner hooks. So, what's that, this is five out. So we'll drop this guy in there, in the five out slot, and then Make sure to get a mold that has a wire keeper on it like this. And what I like to do is drop it in there. I like to use this little pokey thing so I don't burn my fingers. And then, as you can see, hopefully, but we got that one all put in and ready to go. And then, I don't have any 4 aught owner beast hooks, but I do have some of these regular thinner wire. They're actually, I was worried about them not being that sharp, but they're actually pretty sharp still. Now you got your 4 aught hook in there. Grab this, it's got that little hook to the left is what's going to be sticking out to keep your bait on. And 
you can see that tiny little bend in that that's what goes up in the head I would recommend maybe using something like this just because if your molten sitting on top of the lead pot for a while it's gonna be hot and you are definitely gonna burn your fingers now that that's all done grab this guy Oops. close them up as you can see everything is flush on the top if you had a gap in here you would know because it would be pretty noticeable and if you had that you would have to go in there and reset your hook most likely but since we're good let's get to pouring it's gonna be a little awkward since I got this a different way than I usually hold it but You got that. Cures instantly. Pop it open. And then you got them poured. The next step after this would be to grab a pair of pliers and pull this guy off on the top. So that is what we're gonna be doing here now. So as you can see, I got nylon jewelry pliers. And the reason I have those is because with regular pliers like this, I tend to dent and scratch the lead. And you would think that powder coating would help it. It, it does most of the time, but you could still slightly see. And I just like to try to make everything as clean looking as possible. But the nylon on the nylon jewelry pliers was just too slippery to keep inside so I just wrapped some electrical tape around it all you do is grab a hold just shake back and forth pop it off and then you might be able to see on the head there's a slight indention and what I do with that is pinch it here and grab a metal file and I'll just go a few different ways just to kind of make it look a little better so there's not some sort of dent or bulge like that on the top and then after I get that all done I'll grab my sandpaper and I'll just lightly go back and forth I'll just kind of repeat that a little bit until I feel like I got this good enough for me and I just like it I just like them looking clean so that's why I put so much time in, into these instead of pour them pop the little top off throw it back start pouring more I just like it to be you know clean I think the little details matter sometimes let's pour some more Got the second one's poured. So, grab, pinch, shake back and forth, pop it off. It's kind of hard to see on, on the camera. You can see on the very top that little tiny circle that's a, that's a lighter lighter color than the rest that's right here yeah that's what I like to 
you use the file for and sand down. Sometimes I don't need the sandpaper, sometimes it helps, but I don't dig really hard and other, if you dug really hard you would probably lose a lot of lead and you'd have to restart but let's go over it nice and soft multiple directions I don't know if you can see on camera makes it a little better then after that after I'm done with this I got this little rack over here that I'll throw them on let them sit until it's time to time to paint them and by paint I mean powder coat so let's pour the next mold real quick and I'll show you guys what that one looks like so this mold is a little easier all it takes is just a hook so this four uh, hook there's a little groove where the eyelet goes and then just sits in there just like that then this one is a two aught and this one will go right here and so the four aught right here is three eighths of an ounce and the two aught is a quarter ounce so since that is all we need we'll just close this guy up make sure we're flush flush which we are and now we will put our gloves on double check make sure that it's all flush I just like to ride up on top the two aught and the four aught and Let that sit for two seconds. Open this up. Pull those out. As you can see on this one, it's perfect all, all the way around. But, as you can see, This two aught is missing half of the collar right there. So I will show you guys an easy way to save your hook and not have to throw anything away. All you do is grab your pliers, grab it like this. And then I do is just dunk it in and try to save try not to get it in the eyelet which I failed at but sometimes you get lead stuck in the eyelet but now we can reuse this now since we got this guy just grab your jewelry pliers hold it give it a little back and forth Pop this off. Just dump it back in there. This is what it looks like after the pour. Need the nose job. And that's easy from what I've been showing you with this. Just lightly lightly go over like so just keep doing this until you finish it and make it look as good as you can and then set it off to the side and continue let's try this again see if we can get both of these to come out perfect now we got those done 
Now we will close up the mold. Double check, make sure that we're flush everywhere, which we are. We'll do the two odd. Oops. It's kind of hard to do this looking through a camera. Now, time to open these up. The collar is complete, so I'm happy with that. Double check. Go through the whole thing. Yep, that one's good. Next step, grab your nylon pliers. Grab these pliers. Just wiggle it back and forth. Pop it off. Sand. And then... I will show you guys how to how I powder coat them. So. Sorry for the interruption, everyone, but I'm not really sure what happened to the other half of this video. It got all got all messed up, so I'm just gonna redo it for you guys and show you the proper way of how I do everything once again. So stay tuned. So this is the part where the clips got all messed up. Not really sure what was 100% wrong with it, but it just gives me a chance to show you guys a little bit better how to do this. So I do not use ProTech. So if you guys use ProTech, do not follow this. This is a completely different company. I'm not sure what the name is, but because they just gave it in bags and I forgot the name off the top of my head. So I just had these lying around, so I put them in here instead of just doing them in the bags. It is so smooth, but you cannot use a fluid bed or anything. When I used ProTech, I made this little device that I'll show you guys right now. So it's this. And what it does is plug this in and it's connected to a motor on the bottom like a little computer motor and I broke most of the blades off and put a big old fat screw in the bottom and what happened is it broke the other blades on it so now it's pretty much useless it took me a long time to make but I can show you guys how it works I actually got this idea from the engineered angler I, th I think his name is on YouTube I got this off Amazon if you guys can see you got minimum all the way to maximum 3 volts 12 volts it's pretty easy to do and wire up but so what you do is put your little so you just put your little container in there your protect container and then and you just turn this valve or this knob as you can see it it's really really good and it vibrates and it's a little bit better than a fluid bed so you don't have to worry about pouring that into some PVC having to wipe it down if you want to use a different color or make multiple ones but yada yada so there's that I like it done me some good when I've needed it but each one of these is you have to do different um, so I got two that it will do the exact same thing. So once I get this all preheated or turned on, I will open this guy up before it gets too hot and just start throwing my jig heads in there. And I'll just leave it in there for about 10 minutes. And 
you pull them out, dunk them in the powder coat, put them back in. It's a really easy process. So here's the last one. I didn't sand the top, I just want to see what it looks like. This was the only one I didn't sand. So we'll throw that in there. Put that back in. Set it for the certain time that it says. Well now that we got all those in there, I want to show you guys what these actually look like. So, here's some jigs that I've been making. I don't think the camera does it justice. When it hits the light, it's got a purple tint, brown tint. It's good for a PB and J. And we got this green pumpkin right here. So you can see it's more of a textured type of powder coat. So it kind of it kind of hides some of the blemishes if you have any. It's got a green pumpkin and it's actually got dots of black in it, little splots, if that's even a word, splots of black. But yeah, I'll show you guys how to do this once this 10 minutes is up, and we'll see you back here in a sec. Get to it. Pull this guy out. Close it. So now we got this. Grab our jar. Tap off the excess. Grab your other pliers, pull this out, drop it in, grab this one, push that back, close it up, grab the other color, tap off the excess, and just continue to do that. And then once you get them all done, you just gotta make sure these ones don't go over 10 minutes and it's kind of just like babysitting these a little bit. And don't forget to mix up the powder coat. It is about 4.15. So we'll take the ones out on the left accordingly play a game of back and forth So it's 420, we'll pull the ones out on the left at 425, and then we'll pull the second one out 426, 27, 28, 29, just like that. And then this should be done. We'll see you guys back here when we're pulling them out. So I just want to show you guys something real quick. This, it's one of the jigs that I've been working on. I've been working on a skirt color. I'm trying to figure out what works best and that way I can start putting it on my website here pretty soon and if any of you are interested they should be on the website in, in the next two weeks or so hopefully. Yeah, just wanted to show you guys a little close up. This is more like a PB&J a lot of purple just you know purple head but I got brown in here and I got purple and I got purple with black dots on it so and like I said they'll be on the website here pretty soon so stay tuned okay let's take a look at these guys I think this is the one that I did not sand on the top 
or file down. It's kind of hard to see on camera. It's got a little raised bump on it. That's why I like to sand all of these. But I actually have a variety of eyes. Got a bunch of different eyes, like from Jetsons and what is this? Drop Zone. Plain black eyes. Got some, I believe, Jetson. So these can fit an eight, I know, but. I just don't know, I don't remember if, how well they fit a 7. A 7 might fit a little better, because the eight's a little large. I know he's got some pretty big eye cavities on him. Ooh, a 7 works perfect. Fits right inside of there. I think these eyes might look pretty cool on on the green pumpkin since they got since they got the black dots on them those raised bumps are like the black dots that I just don't know why it's not picking up on camera And like I said earlier, I'll get a better close-up shot of all these. Get your gel super glue. That might be a little too much. This is a brand new bottle, so probably might ooze out the sides. Some people use tweezers. I tend to stay away. I don't never had good luck with them then you just let this sit for a while it'll be nice and dry and I've never had one come off so There's one of them done right there. The one that we did not sand the top of, so it got a little, little bump. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but got both eyes super glued on. So, put that over here. Then we'll start the next one. We'll do this green pumpkin. But first, let's figure out kind of eyes. I think I'm gonna go with these because they got more of a green. Put a little dollop glue on there. Peel off your eye. And we'll bam. Doesn't really have a pop. Like I was hoping for. So let's do the other one. There's that guy. That guy's done. Let's figure out do something different that would look not good at all red nope Let's just try straight black on this purple actually I know it probably won't look the best but I want to go for, for these diamond type guys diamond looking eyes do a tiny little dollop
doesn't look the best, but I might get a few. I might get a few fish's attentions. Few fish. Few. Yeah, you know what I mean. So then we'll move on to the next eye. Put a little dollop on there. Hi. The cat's watching me. Uh oh. I mean, that's probably a good reason right there to use tweezers so it doesn't get stuck on your finger and leave residue on the eye and maybe around it. Doesn't look the best, but you know, it's got that sparkle. you like this one it's a little bit different than what I've been posting but I'm gonna be posting more lead pouring videos and, and show you guys how to make jigs soon and if you guys have any questions leave them down in the comments and I'll answer them but yeah we got some more lead pouring videos coming up real soon so subscribe and stay tuned if you want to see more but yeah thanks for the view and I'll see you guys next time